she caught me from the get-go with that. It was about innovations, and one of the innovations was utilizing applications in the, um, in the classroom. One of the big things I set up for was engagement, not only with my students, but also in the hospital setting, is how can I engage these learners? Because if I engage them, I know, then learning is probably going to be happening. So lecture often fails with a, uh, it's not a multimodal um, format. In, by no means do I think that we should get rid of um, lecture. I think there needs to be a foundational, a theoretical foundation that is set. This adds that element. It actually is going to encourage the engagement. It's going to encourage the, the learning process, okay? And then again, using um, research shows that using interactive pedagogies allows for um, the student to improve their learning and their engagement. Okay, we're familiar with this, the higher order of learning skills and kind of, I always think of like, kind of theory falls in here, but as we start to add these different um, modalities, like some of the ones I'm gonna show you, we kind of increase the, um, the understanding, the applying, the evaluating, creating. That's the nursing process. So how do we take this and really make them understand the nursing process on a, on a much higher level? So we're gonna to review today um, some apps in the classrooms for projects, study tools, class activities, and instructional um, tools. You will have access to this PowerPoint as well. Um, so I don't, if you don't frantically feel like you have to write, you will have access to that, okay? So apps for projects. There are two really good ones that are interactive whiteboards. On my PowerPoint, it also is gonna have the link that you can click on those, and it kind of differentiates the two. It gives great, I tried to include examples as well. Um, so uh, these are great whiteboards. It kind of does, um, if I think of this as, when I'm trying to talk about fetal circulation, it's a very um, tricky uh, concept to understand, so I might lecture on it, then I might show a video on it, then I might actually draw it out. And I can post that, so after the lecture is done, they can go back and review that. Same thing with fetal monitoring. I review a mini lecture in clinical. They've got it in theory, I review it in clinical, then I can actually videotape myself, post it, because it's a lot of information. For me, fetal monitoring is like learning a foreign language in a matter of less than 24 hours. Not many of us could do that. So just try to reinforce these, um, these key components of your lecture that are kind of tricky, again, that you want them to, um, to get, okay? So there's some great ones. This is a great website comparing the two. They're very, very similar, those, these two, the you creation and the, the um, explain everything. So this is a great um, website comparing the two, okay? Again, I think for time's sake, we just, I can't click on all my, my links, but we are gonna have some interactive um, activities. Okay, say I want to, I'm gonna do a health assessment, and I want them to do a assessment on a respiratory system. Uh, I'm gonna lecture on it, okay? Then I might give them a group project, and they can record themselves doing an actual respiratory assessment. And that could be a, an assignment of some sort. So they could turn it in and you can look at it. Head to toe, I'm not sure the, the amount of time would be effective for a head to toe assessment, but a system could definitely be used in this, um, in this study. This, and I would say amnio because that's what my, again, my OB comes in. So, but in a great way, um, and then they can present it they could come back to class and present it. So not only are you having them do kind of an outside, then they come into class and they teach their peers um, that or review those, okay? So again, a nice way and it's fun. And a lot of times they're more savvy at this than we are. So why not utilize that, get them? Because we all know they're not gonna read. They're just not gonna read, okay? So apps for content, Kahoot. So everyone loves Kahoot. Um, the game, um, I, when I was researching this, I was surprised at how many med medical schools use Kahoot. So tons of um, answer questions and they play the game and it's like, it can be timed, you can put them in teams, it really gets them involved. So this is a great, great way to, um, to, to kind of test their knowledge, if you will. Great for kind of a, a review at the end of before a test. Uh, so this is a great, great <coughs> one there. Again, medical students, I could not believe how many 
YouTube videos were on, on medical content that was being used with Kahoot. Study Blue, this is going to be like flashcards. So this is kind of like, what's that other one that they use? Um, Quizlet. Like Quizlet. It's kind mm -hmm. of like, but at a higher level in a sense. Mm -hmm. So um, these can be used for guides. You can attach this to your Blackboard site. So you could do some reviews for that. So maybe you don't have time in your class for review for a test. You could post some questions on, on this or study guide on Study Blue, and they can look at that, and then you have provided that. Because we've all heard, where's the study guide? Where's the study guide? Where's the study guide? Right? So there it is. And actually, when I was on there, I think Molly was on there, and somebody else was on there. I could. You, they can. They break it down by like universities, so you can. You could actually click on other universities and see what they have too, unless it has a lock. But some of them didn't have locks. Clickers. Okay, so this is one of my favorite things. Um, clickers are these cards. They are paper clickers. So. I have, here's one of my demonstrations. Oops, sorry. Paper clickers. So, what you do with this is, if you look on this very funny looking paper, you have an A, you have a B, a C, and D, and I printed the large font. This is the large font, it doesn't look smaller than that. Um, and it's anonymous. So based on your answers, you rotate your card on what you want. So I've created some questions. I have heard of clickers before. So hold up, A is yes, B is no, and C is maybe. <coughs> and then the teacher, myself, I'm going to scan the room. As I scan the class, it gives me a readout. So there's the first one. And so I can say, these are the students who responded. It shows up. You can get a big printout too. And then I can do a graph. How many said yes? How many said no? So this is great for assessment. Again, we know they don't read. But say you're going through and you want to assess their understanding because you want to plan your lesson for the day. It's futile to waste time on something that they already know. But say they are, say that I asked how many of you understand fetal monitoring or overlay, and I scanned it and I'm like, oh, I gotta follow up on that. Or medications, how many, there's so many endless ways that you could, could work on this. And then you can critique it. Okay, so we can go on to the next one. And again, it shows you what cards, and you can actually assign cards. I can assign you a card, and it's a great way to take attendance. It's a great way, again, if you wanted, if you wanted it anonymous or if you wanted to keep track. So um, I loved those scratch offs. You know how you did the questions, but they're expensive. This is free, so this could be another way that you could use. I printed out these off the internet. They're perfectly, they're free. You can buy some on Amazon that are laminated, and you can like assign their card. That would be their card for the semester, and then you would have it. So endless opportunities with clickers in a fun way. Okay, so let's see what we have here. All right, so on the PowerPoint, I have actually how to go, download, download free, it's free. There is an upgraded version that gives you more graphs and more details and stuff like that, but the free version works just as fine. Again, you can print or buy the, um, the cards on Amazon. I used it from the free site. Print out the cards. Every card has a unique number that you could identify it with the student. And then you do it just like we did. Okay? That's really cool. All right. I, the, the point, the thing that I love is the graph. It really is going to tell you. Okay? You can see we scanned it, and it can, there's an example of a graph. And it kind of breaks down again. All right? So we already did that. Games. 
Family Feud, Jeopardy. Um, these have been around for a very long time. However, I want to tell you that the California Return of Quality and Maternity, Maternal Quality and Care Collaboration actually used this. I used this recently in the hospital for a, because um, I do the, I do the um, drills, so the postpartum hemorrhage drill. And trying to get them engaged with the hemorrhage drill is like pulling teeth. Um, so this is a multidisciplinary, I have residents, I have attendings, I have everybody that I'm kind of responsible for educating. Feeling kind of funny about that. But they have used, it's amazing, they have this. This is a regulatory agency that is actually using Jeopardy as an education, it's part of their toolkit that they send to hospitals. And so I use this. Some of the questions, I have no idea what they were asking. Yes. Can you give an example of like how you use it in the classroom? Because like I know how like I used it in the class, but I wonder if there's like value ways. So usually it's for like review, content right. review. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it could be, I mean, I guess it would have to be if you'd have to be answering the question. So you would have had to have had some background knowledge of that and then kind of a, a review of is what we would use it as. Um, so like I kind of go around the room and like sometimes let them be pairs and like have them answer a question mm -hmm. and they get a point if they answer the question correctly and if not then somebody else can steal it. Yeah. But, I, but how are other people, is it how everybody else is using it or is, is there a different way? So I just use it as, as content. Like we sat down and I had them click on it mm -hmm. and then they would just answer it as a group. That's how I used it in the, in the hospital setting okay. with that. Okay, so they just do it as a group. As, as a group, group, but you could. You know, and so my courses are all online. They just like playing Jeopardy. It's, 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 their own so, okay. <laughs> it's almost like a solitaire activity, and okay. they just love it. Okay. Yeah, okay. you know, bank, banking up the money. Yeah, I just put it online. I do it with the uh, pain, yeah. everything about pain and suffering yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, they just enjoy it. It, and they're not even playing with anybody. They're playing themselves, trying to answer the questions. And it's kind of a non-threatening way, and it's a great review. I, I like to think that this, all of these yeah. provide that student check, like, whoa, I don't know this. Mm -hmm. I need to go back home. And that's what I like to think, and I hope that that's what's happening, is I didn't get that right. I need to follow up with that, or I need to relook at that content. So, but I thought it was, um, I couldn't believe when I saw this for, again, a huge regulation quality initiative, and they're using Jeopardy to educate <coughs> as a multidisciplinary um, in, in a multidisciplinary setting. So I and I haven't done it for a couple of years now, but I broke up the kids in groups, mm -hmm. and I had them come up with their own game. They had a certain content they had to cover. I, they had to come up with their own game. They had to make up their own questions. They had to make it up. Yeah, and, then, great and way. then they made everybody else participate in their game. And one of them, I forget the game, but whether it was um, one of the lifeline things, and it was ask the ask the professor. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Did you get it right? I got it right, but Good. I was scared. That could be stressful. Yeah. <laughs> that could be so. So again, anyway, so so put it on way. them. To yeah. Develop. That's a great. So that they're learning as they're going with, for their content area, and then you know they make everybody else play. And make that a project idea. where they each have to do a category of some sort. I mean, some of these categories, I was like, what? So we're again, Med Mania, I Spy, Say What. This was on preeclampsia, and this is all on the website. You know, like I said, we got it as a as a, as a hospital system, but all on the website that you can utilize that. So I thought that was interesting. Even they are using it. Okay, so Family Feud, that's a great one. And there's already templates in there. You All you have to do is click on it. The One Jeopardy has the music, it has everything already there for you, okay? Um, QR codes, my next favorite thing. QR codes, you know, you see these little, um, there's my baby with my QR codes on it. So you see all the, these little things. Well, um, I recently used, I, I didn't know what they were. It can be everything from, you can put it on your office hours to maybe you don't want your number like flashed on there. So the student has to scan it and it'll pop up your office hours, your business card. Realtors are using it. Um, whenever you go to a conference, you know, they have you put your name and all that. Well, it's linked to your QR code. So I didn't know that. My last A1 conference, I'm getting all kinds of email stuff. I'm like, how do these people get my, oh, it was on my QR code on my bag. <coughs> so as you walk around, they're scanning you. Um, 
So I used this recently. I presented on a poster uh, in the hospital, and I did an escape room. And on this poster, um, scientific posters are so congested. You walk past them and you, you like the, the font is this big, you can't read it. So we struggled with that, that idea and we found this. It lists the key points. So I still have my in, in, um, introduction, my methods, my, but it's the key points of that. All of the meat and potatoes of my poster and my paper that was attached to it is right here. So they could walk by and they could scan and then it's on their phone. They're not taking a picture of it, trying to zoom in on it. Everything is right there. So one, I thought the poster was more attractive because I could put more things on it that people would stop by. I think it stuck out a little bit because not many people had this type of, I mean, you're starting to see a few of them, but I wouldn't be surprised if in the near future, more of our scientific posters look like this. So it was, it was great. It was my first time ever doing it at work, thank God. Um, but yeah, it was, so these are popping up everywhere. Um, so, it can be linked to a PowerPoint. So if you take your iPhones, and if you open up the camera, part of it. So I have my baby, my little demonstration baby here. I have two QR codes. The first QR code is going to be, if you scan, if you open it up, and it should pop up. Did it pop up? No, I just got my camera. I have a, I have okay. a Samsung, not an what iPhone. Work? I think we have to download the so app. Yeah, click open it up. So <coughs> if you, you open in YouTube. I just yeah, open in YouTube. Just kind of put it on there. Did it pop up? Oh, wow. Up at the top? Mm -hmm. And then open okay, to the video? Okay, click on it. Now it opens to the video. You don't have to take a picture. Just okay. kind of... Does it work? You're showing. Sure. Not the safety place. Usually most of the cameras. Just okay. open up to so the video. So here's open up. Yeah, on the, no, it should just open. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you need the QR code yeah. reader app. Not necessarily. If you have anything that scans, Meyer, Target, CVS, anything along that line. Well, I'm just saying on an Android, you might yeah. need to have yep. that. I'm going to try this out. That's cool. You see? Okay. What do I have to do? As soon as we still have to have the phone out, because they love that. I mean, yeah, it should have been. It has to be all between them. So what do I do? Click on the YouTube thing. Yeah, it's kind of a YouTube thing. Oh, did you just do it? Try to do it. 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 Try to do I also, oh, I think that, does anybody have the Android? I think you got to have the okay. reader. And then the next one I have on there, I have linked yeah. to an article with some questions on um, polydactylism. So it's an article that says what is the causes of it, and that's on the hand. So they could go on there and read it and answer the questions as well. So a great way See how to it looks. deliver that type, and that way you're not loading oh. a bunch of stuff into yeah. your um, <laughs> So, so cool. Mm -hmm. So here are the readers. So if you scan that one, that's gonna take you to the website that I used. And literally all I did was copy and paste the website from the infant having respiratory distress and plugging it in there and it generated it for me very very easy now they have very very elaborate ones mm -hmm. that you can link lots of things this was free on the internet okay way fun endless again endless possibilities great for those things that you don't see very often um, if you are kind of, I, I envision this kind of having um, Stations set up around the room and having them going around and looking at it, answering questions, those types of things. Again, getting them out of their seat, engaged, talking about it. Those are what we want to see. You know, you, you it, it's, it's the, the possibilities are endless. Can they scan Excellent. it off of that screen in the work? Um, let's see. I think you can. Does it work right here? No. Do you have to get a little closer? Let me see. You want me to try? Oh, okay. I can try with mine. Now, for the previous 
saw the baby, it's, it's, it's gone. Now having like, should I find it somewhere on my phone? Would I scan? Um, I don't it, know. It, it should open download. Up. Yeah, it should, it should, it should be something download. you can keep. Um, go back to your internet setting and see if you can pull it up. You know how it's like files it? Okay. So, yes. I was just going to say, we did a research study last year, and uh, we put this on the on the uh, flyer that went out for the research study, so people were able, the participants just scanned right in and took the survey right off, yes. wherever they were. That's what I'm seeing in oh, the most. Oh, it's a size of about 500, I think, like because post of the survey. survey. Wow. And it links. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So, like an evaluation, yeah. those types of things, that's what I'm having it. I believe the Sim Lab uses it currently <laughs> for the evaluation students have to get and then go on and it records their, um, their answers. Okay? So again, endless possibilities for that you can have. I will send you, it should work when I send it to PowerPoint. I think it's, I don't, I don't know why. It worked the last time you did that. I yeah. think we have to download it though. See, I just closed out of it. Mm -hmm. I think we have to do something to it to keep it. Save it or download it or okay. do something. So I do have them up here if you would like to, but again, okay. it's just a copy and a paste, mm -hmm. and I, I can get that to you if you'd like that. Yeah. And that website walks you through how to do yes, it? Yes, it was very, very easy. Mm -hmm. Again, it'll say click and drag or copy paste. So I found my video, I copied, um, it was on YouTube, I copied it, and then I pasted it right in there. It was literally side-by-side -side generated. I printed that out, and I took a picture of it and pulled it right up. Mm -hmm. Very, very easy. Apps for outside the classroom. So most of the time this is going to be used for communication, feedback, organization. Um, remind, I think every every high schooler, I my daughter's advanced biology teacher, I get when they're having tests, everything like that. The coach sends it when, you know, uh, parkas and swim monies do. So that is a great way. The good thing about this is you can send something out and your number's not attached to it. So your phone number doesn't show up. Okay. Um, and it also can be translated into 70 different languages, which I did not know. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. um, Slack, this is kind of like a, so we do have this here at the university. This was something that was told to me by, sister, who is that one that came? Sister, sister, Renee. sister Renee, yes. So you can hold like, um, virtual office hours, those types of things. She was really pushing more towards like that Skype business, mm -hmm. those types of things, it's the same thing where you could Skype with there. So that's kind of along this line, um, again, and why you um, why you could use this. This was something that she gave me. I wasn't totally familiar with this, but she said this would be another one that we could um, do. We have this on every Yeah. Um, we, ha we, we have Skype business. So I think that we did have this and we replaced it with at the Skype. time, yeah, with the Skype business. The she had Skype yeah. uh, usually, yes, everybody should have Skype business. And I'm gonna show you on ours how we use, there's another one called Teams that has it as well. So here, um, we have Sister Renee Kettering. She's phenomenal. She really should be giving us this, this, this um, lecture. Unbelievable. U Teams, so I want to show you about U Teams. Oh, it's my stomach. So we use Teams in the hospital setting. Whoops, wrong way. Uh, we use Teams in the hospital setting, and the great thing about that is that we, so I was trying to push for certification on my unit, so we set up a website. The director started. Um, a, it's almost like a chat room, but in this chat room, you can post videos. You can find fetal circulation. She actually did a practice test on here. The good thing about this is, is that we have a six month period, and so we can send you an email, but then in six months, they're gone. So this stays permanently. So to increase our certification numbers, we formed a group. And you can see the groups that I'm part of, the certification, the clinical ladder, um, I'm on the mentor and mentee, and it kind of keeps it so you're not getting bogged down with all those emails. If I wanna know what the latest and the greatest is for this particular group, I click on it. So, and it takes me to the most certain one, but uh, they could take, this test looks like where they're actually multiple choice sitting with rationales on it, it was amazing. 
amazing of what she was able to do. We posted case studies, we posted strips to, to kind of facilitate a discussion. And then as people passed, we started congratulating them online. So everybody on the unit was part of this so they could see even if they weren't sitting the exam. So that was a great example of how this, and it stays there. So I don't have to worry about reposting the test because in six months it falls off in the hospital setting. Okay, uh, let's go back to this. Okay, um, one note that was kind of a note-taking thing that they told me about that the students can use. Um, they can keep track of their notes on there um, and they can share them. OneDrive we kind of have already. So any questions about anything? Oh, look at that perfect timing. Short, short, sweet. I mean, the goal was not to teach you all this. The goal was to strike an interest so then you go back and you do the research, just like I did with um, when I went to my conference. Can you send us the PowerPoint? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if this question, but this question is really for anybody. Um, who teaches online has, and Mitzi kind of said she was like rejecting online. Has anybody used any of this stuff in an online way? Because I have one of my courses teach next semester and would be interested in maybe using something. Anybody? I think, again, you, the QR code, you could just post it. You could copy and paste it, and then that could be something that you could do with the Jeopardy. Um, any of the videos, the video things, if you had something where they had to video and redo it, and post that. Um, I think sometimes we get into kind of size constraints that you can't post something so large. So that is, and then with struggles of outside material sometimes, it really didn't have too much of an issue with outside material, but sometimes it'll block, and especially in the hospital. I get a lot of blocks to where I can't, you know. Sherry, in that Animoto about how long of a video can they create that what we can still I'm not quite learn. sure of that, yeah. I'm not quite sure of what the ins and outs are of, of that specifically. But again, the website that I found do, does kind of walk through and go through that pretty in depth. Yeah, it's just, it is an issue with trying to load on Blackboard. I mean, it's not only, and I'm, I'm thinking anything <coughs> over 20, 25 minutes is too big. Yeah, I don't think you can email. Yeah. It becomes, you know, so I'm just wondering. I'm going to try the Animoto. I, I think that's a good yeah. thing. I know what do you think, Tom? my students have been doing videos and I've been putting them in going out to YouTube. Yeah. Just doing YouTube okay. mm -hmm. so A lot of times that's, that's, that's kind of happen. the easiest way. Yeah. The easiest way just, I was they am concerned with that. Are they still scared of us about YouTube? Because we yeah. had to do it before yeah. and then we yeah. got all this well, we got smack down help with that's and YouTube videos. Yeah. 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 How can you say you can't do the help with that? Because they're in an ultra class. Because of what? Because they're public. Look at they the are. They are public. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that I've done, yeah, <coughs> it's out there. So just make yeah. sure that it's. But I mean, like the university, like we were told we can't use those YouTube videos. What's the policy on that? Do you know? Well, they told I us remember they just that. Told us we can't do it. Well, so I think a good person to kind of bring into this conversation would be Sister Renee. She might know what we can use. Which one of those? Um, which one of those things? Because she did tell me that this is what we have. The university policy says we can use stuff. It's not a violation of FERPA, but then the MSON says uh, we can't yeah. use it. You well, can't show that, pictures that of students and pictures of patients. Like you can make a video of yourself and yeah. post it on YouTube. And so right? we were told the help assessment mm -hmm. can that. We were told no. Yeah. We were told to cease and desist and no uncertain terms. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to Can't you set who can mm -hmm. see it? You can. You no, can. You can. You can. But then the professor can't see it. And they don't film in the hospital. They film in an exam room on campus. I tried to join this meeting by Zoom this morning. It wasn't happening. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> My technical <laughs> advisor. Oh. Well, what's the first video we get yeah. right now? So to put on YouTube? <laughs> 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 well, guys, it's okay. We'll just get through it. You consented, right? <laughs> 